Hello people, in this video let us look at the top priority obstetric questions. Um, so everything about uh, childbirth, right, pregnancy and childbirth we are looking at now. We have arranged it in a certain pattern. So you can look at this, the physiological changes that happen during pregnancy, hyperemesis, gravidarium, anemia and pregnancy. Then we'll go on one step further, twin pregnancy, problems like preeclampsia, um, GDM, overt just diabetes mellitus. Then we look at polyhydramnios. Then we will look at ectopic pregnancy, molar pregnancy, medical termination of pregnancy, breach. This is coming towards the delivery side. Breach, non-stress test, cardiotopography, induction of labor, mechanism of normal labor, episiotomy, vacuum versus forceps, partogram, lower segment cesarean section. So these are the top priority questions in obstetrics. We will also be looking at the specific uh, terms in obstetrics, guys. So get set. This one should be your revision video for your exam if it is uh, soon. So get, let's get started. So let's get started with the first one here, physiological changes during pregnancy. <clears throat> this itself is a whole uh, chapter actually. Let's try to uh, bring it uh, here. So what are the changes in the genital organs? Genital organs, what and all will be there? vulva, vagina, right, then uh, all this will come there. So you will have to talk about the, in vagina you have to talk about the Jacquimer or Chadwick sign, Lewis discoloration, Osiander sign that is increased pulsation, right, so that all this you have to talk about. Then coming to the uterus, uterus what will happen, it will become large, globular, soft, elastic, Hagar sign, the fingers will oppose, so you remember the Hagar sign, this is the Hagar sign. So where the fingers will oppose, so you have to talk about this. Then coming to cervix, it is the good, good health sign. Good health sign means the cervix will become soft like lips, okay. So these are the uh, some changes that you will write. Then coming to breast, breast, what are the changes people? Breast will enlarge, Montgomery tubercle, colostrum, secondary areola, erect nipple. So very briefly we are telling you, all this you have to read in detail, okay. Cutaneous changes, you talk about linea, niagara, stria, gravidarium, okay, write all this. Then coming to weight gain, what will you talk about weight gain? What is the net weight gain? Around 11 kgs, right, it should be. What is the importance of weight gain? Rapid weight gain could be uh, indicative of what preeclampsia, right. Then if it is a falling weight, then it is something like intrauterine growth restriction, right. So all this you should be careful. Then coming to body water metabolism. This is a strange word, body water metabolism. So water retained is about, uh, at term, is about 6.5 liters. So you should remember, a pregnancy is a state of hypervolemia. Okay. Then coming to hematological changes. Hematological changes, changes in the blood. The plasma volume will increase. Then what will happen to this? There will be a hemodilution. So it will just look like an apparent anemia, but it will not be anemia. Okay. Then. What else you should talk about people? Immune. Immune because uh, blood means what even WBCs, right? So there will be neutro neutrophilic leukocytosis. Okay. So in interestingly, there is more <coughs> neutrophils, right? Platelets will decrease. Okay. It will be same or it will decrease in count. Remember, platelets will decrease in count. But still, pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state because the fibrinogen levels is raised. Okay. What will happen to cardiovascular system? It will pump more because it has to give blood to the baby. So the cardiac output will increase. The stroke volume will increase. The heart rate will increase. Okay. This much you can remember. Then uh, what will happen to the blood vessels? You know that the blood vessels will actually dilate. But in preeclampsia, it will spasm. So all this you should know. How is it going people? Is it becoming too much? So we are talking about physiological changes in pregnancy. Very important question for obstetrics. In this cardiovascular system, guys, remember that she should sleep on the left lateral position because when she sleeps, she will be compressing her IVC. The return to the heart will become less, okay? Metabolic changes. What are the metabolic changes you can talk about, people? Come on. Metabolic changes. Think in pregnancy. What will happen to the metabolism? <clears throat> what will happen to insulin? Insulin secretion is increased, they are saying. But the sensitivity to insulin receptors is decreased. So that's why she might develop gestational diabetes mellitus, okay? She will have a requirement of iron kidney more. So you will give her iron, calcium, etc. Okay. Now coming to systemic changes. What are the systemic changes you will see in a woman who is pregnant? Obviously, we talked about water retention, etc. What else? Acid-based balance. What will happen to the pH? pH will rise. Okay. The pH rises. Hmm. And then what will happen to uh, kidney, ureter, bladder? Bladder in late pregnancy, it can get 
compressed right so that is why she may have frequency of urination remember postpartum she can go into psychosis etc depression etc also during pregnancy she may have some temperamental changes so all this you will write okay so we are done with this question physiological changes during pregnancy did you understand so you will have to write under all these headings now let's move on to the second question hyperemesis gravidarum okay so hyperemesis gravidarum is um, uh, basically excess vomiting not just simple vomiting hyperemesis more vomiting okay so it can be excessive incapacitating her deteriorating her health remember there is no specific volume here it is basically affecting her okay so it can not just be uh, a pregnancy related it can be a lot of other things like appendicitis or intestinal infection or hepatitis or um, ketoacidosis of diabetes or pancreatitis or peptic ulcer or so many things so you should always be aware of this uh, condition don't only think it is pregnancy and smile about it no it can be something more so basically problem for her is that she can have electrolyte imbalance look at this she can have electrolyte imbalance she will have hypokalemia less potassium less sodium and chloride everything is less only they have written she can have alkalosis or acidosis acidosis means she'll have acetone breath she will suffer from hypoglycemia hypoproteinemia hypovitaminosis everything is hypo 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 here looks like she'll have epigastric pain etc so uh, basically how do you manage it before that even more complications that she can go into wernicke's encephalopathy she can have uh, a vitamin b1 deficiency corcav cor sack of psychosis she can have then she can have stress ulcers in her stomach because of all this vomiting esophageal tears can happen because of all these vomiting so you must understand that uh, this is uh, these are some of the complications now let us see how you will treat okay before that again why, why does it happen because of progesterone estrogen uh, hcg etc the uh, cardiac sphincter will relax it will allow everything from the stomach to come up and stomach will also say i will not uh, move at all it will have impaired gastric motility so everything will come out and she will want okay did you understand people and it uh, does not affect the fetus fetus remains unaffected by hyperemesis gravidarum look at the treatment here if it is simple vomiting just vitamin b1 and uh, promethazine on dancetron if it is heg that is hyperemesis gravidarum give, give her fluids that is dextrose plus ringer okay dextrose plus ringer is what you are giving and uh, because of electrolyte imbalance obviously ringer then you are talking about vitamin b1 that you will give promethazine clo prochlorperazine on dancetron metaclopramide okay now let us go to anemia and pregnancy super people you have completed two important priority questions now let us move to anemia and pregnancy so anemia and pregnancy uh, basically means what they are saying the concentration of hemoglobin less than 11 very good um, so basically what are the complications of anemia if she has anemia she can go into preeclampsia infections heart failure preterm labor she can go into during the labor she can go into postpartum hemorrhage understand that here she is not having hemoglobin and she is going into hemorrhage interesting right so she also can go into cardiac failure because this heart already has this uh, a uh, blood on it right it will be a high output state and over that now she are trying to push labor so she can have cardiac failure shock etc she is prone to infections what else preeclampsia can be because of malnutrition and hypoproteinemia the reasons also they have written here you can look at all this and baby will be small they are saying okay small baby that will be a small baby okay 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 now let's move on don't worry so these are the complications of anemia and pregnancy okay then still continue in pure perium also she can have sepsis poor lactation subinvolution of the uterus uh, venous thrombosis she can have pulmonary embolism so basically she can uh, if she has anemia she can uh, there, there may be sudden death of the patient not the baby the patient itself can die about 30 to 30 30 to 32 weeks of pregnancy and on the baby we told you it can be a small baby okay and even intrauterine death of the baby can occur remember we already told you that uh, there will be some hemodilution right plasma volume will increase etc so there can be what 
physiological anemia so there are two types of anemia physiological anemia and pathological anemia but we will focus here on the pathological one okay now pathological can become because of iron deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency folic acid deficiency because of uh, some other causes like bone marrow insufficiency all this you know about anemia why it happens right so deficiency anemia then you have hemorrhagic anemia where she is bleeding right hookworm infestation etc and then the destruction of rbcs that can be because of um, malaria etc right or there is some rbc membrane defect g6pd deficiency spherocytosis all this you know anemia classification you know same thing only okay you write all this okay are you focusing people classification of anemia in pregnancy okay now let's move on so if it is less than 7 uh, it is severe and anyways uh, always you will first try to give oral iron and see if she can uh, make up the uh, hemoglobin unless she is very near to the uh, delivery date that time you can think about blood transfusion so anyways iron therapy guys so how much iron they are giving this is the formula they are saying 2.2 into weight uh, into target uh, hemoglobin minus uh, patient hemoglobin that's the hemoglobin deficit basically they are talking about okay plus 1000 uh, they are adding for storage otherwise you can use formula like 4.4 uh, okay that is the formula which we learned in ph ph pharmacology 4.4 into weight into uh, hemoglobin deficit where they are not going to add 1000 basically okay for storage so 4.4 we'll remember what do you say people remember guys that uh, you should always deworm the person okay because if you are giving all this and still she is losing blood no point right you should find out whether it is microcytic anemia or macrocytic anemia and whether it is deficiency anemia you have to treat based on the cause okay then parenteral iron guys they will ask you this um, uh, new one that is that uh, which is that ferrous carboxy maltose right this is the one that they are giving it's actually very expensive this one actually ferric ferric carboxy maltose this is what they are actually giving in the opd okay so just pay attention to all this so go back here and add that point anemia and pregnancy right ferric carboxy maltose okay this is what they are giving now right so let's this is like 3000 rupees for that small bottle now guys look at this um, how how fast will the hemoglobin rise uh, like for three weeks it will rise one gram so please all these questions are very important for your viva viva they will ask all this okay then when will you give blood if the hemoglobin is less and if uh, if she's near in the late stage of pregnancy okay then only you will consider all this okay otherwise I'll always try oral iron first okay you will give only RBCs. Why? You want to avoid volume overload. But even with this, uh, she can go into iron overload. That time you will have to give some chelating agent. Okay. If it is macrocytic anemia, what will you give her? Will you give her iron? No. You will give her vitamin B12. Very good people. They can also ask you in this anemia and pregnancy, how will you manage it during labor? So pay attention here to how you will manage it. So basically you will keep an aseptic um, etc. You will keep her ready, you know, you'll try to bring her uh, hemoglobin to the proper level. But anyways, uh, otherwise also they are saying that you will give oxygen, you will try to maintain asepsis so that she doesn't go into infection. Then you will use uh, forceps or vacuum delivery, you will shorten the duration of the second stage of labor so that, you know, her heart can uh, take it easy, right? Then... Um, the methargen they are giving as soon as the delivery of the baby because they want the uterus to contract so that there will be less uh, blood loss okay and they are also keeping all this uh, ready you know fresh packed cells uh, they have kept ready in case she needs okay and then what else again in pure perium they are giving her antibiotics they are continuing our iron therapy etc okay and you tell the woman not to get pregnant again very soon understood yeah very good so you have completed the anemia and pregnancy superb people now let us move on to uh, the next uh, questions what do you say now people let us move on to preeclampsia okay now preeclampsia what do you know about it <coughs> basically when hypertension is added on with protein urea then it becomes preeclampsia okay so this preeclampsia when it gets added on with seizures it becomes eclampsia so you should remember that preeclampsia is a word used only when it is because of pregnancy uh, in a previously normotensive no, non-proteinuric woman okay that time it is called as preeclampsia if she already had hypertension then what will you call it as you will call it a superimposed preeclampsia 
So in pregnancy, what happens? The uh, uh, actually vasodilation, but in this woman, okay, in this woman, what is happening? Because of some uh, factors, there is spasming. This, as you can see here, the, it's narrowing, spasming. So the blood pressure will rise. Actually, the blood pressure should drop, but blood pressure is increasing. So what happens when blood pressure increases? She'll develop hypertension. It's called as hypertension. With this hypertension, if you add protein urea, it will become what? Preeclampsia. Right now to that preeclampsia, if you add seizures, it will become eclampsia. Very good. So this is the whole concept. Okay. So why is this preeclampsia happening? Because of thromboxane, cytokines, uh, then uh, especially this uh, soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase one. Okay. So this is what you have to write. So here you can see SFLT one. Okay. This becomes more. So this is anti-angiogenic factor. This is what is causing this vasospasm, etc. Endothelin, all this you can write. Okay. So this is what is the etiopathogenesis of uh, preeclampsia. So in preeclampsia, you will talk about ankle edema and then you will talk about uh, headache, uh, blurred vision, etc. All this is, uh, these are ominous signs, alarming signs they are saying, okay. So what else, uh, abnormal weight gain if it is there, then you will have to screen her, right, for all this uh, hypertension. How will you treat preeclampsia, guys? You will give her labetalol, uh, so many other drugs are there, right, nifedipine, hydrolazine. Do you remember the stable people? Labetalol, hydrolazine, nifedipine. Then they are talking about nitroglycerin. Okay. Sodium nitroprusside. This is about uh, managing the blood pressure. But otherwise, so you have to give magnesium sulfate for uh, seizures. So you can see the management of eclampsia here. Left lateral recumbent position. Uh, you give her air, manage her airway or oxygen. Two white bore cannulas, Foley catheter, pulse oximeter you will measure. Then you will check the fetal status, you will control the hypertension with labetalol, hydrolazine, this we told you. Then you will do oropharyngeal suction. Pritchard regimen, very very important. What is this? 4 gram IV. See she is throwing seizures but still you are opening an IV can, a line and you are giving her IV. Okay, don't write IM. 4 gram is IV. Then it is 10 gram uh, IM. That is 5 gram to each buttock. Okay, totally you are giving 14 gram of magnesium sulfate. It is the drug of choice, remember. Maintenance dose, then you are giving 5 gram uh, every 4 hourly. See, everybody will write uh, first part, they will forget second part. 5 gram. 4 hourly I am in alternate buttock maintenance dose. Okay, so every 4 hours she is getting poked in the buttock alternatively. Please remember 5 gram. Okay, the other uh, option is uh, some uh, Zuspan and Cybel uh, uh, regimen if you want you can remember that. Okay, we are not remembering that because we will get confused if you remember too much. Now let's move on to overt diabetes mellitus and gestational diabetes mellitus. What is overt means that means she has this uh, uh, diabetes mellitus. Even before the pregnancy, it is not because of pregnancy. GDM is what? Gestational diabetes mellitus. You see the word GG, gestational, that means to say what it is because of pregnancy. Yes. Over diabetes mellitus is more dangerous than gestational diabetes mellitus. Yes, please, please focus on that. Okay, so let's look at this uh, PPT. So what you will do, you will check for her, um, uh, you will do dipsy. Okay, dipsy is what? As soon as she comes, that is when will you do this? 24 to 28 weeks is written here only. Please focus. Okay. So you will just give her, uh, you will bring the woman and give her what? 75 gram of glucose. Okay. So basically you are just giving her 75 gram of glucose irrespective of her, of her fasting status. And then you will check the, after 2 hours you will check the venous plasma glucose. If it is greater than 140, it is uh, gestational diabetes mellitus. If it is greater than 200, it is overt diabetes mellitus. Okay. Remember that. Then you can also check the uh, HB A1C level, okay. If it is less than 6.5, it is good. You understood? Okay. So basically, what you should understand here is over diabetes mellitus is more dangerous. Why? Because it is it's going to be there even during the first trimester when there is organogenesis happening. So are you understanding, people? So if there is overt diabetes mellitus, it is not good. Why? Because the baby's organogenesis is happening and this can adversely affect and it can cause fetal anomalies. So overt diabetes mellitus is not good. Gestational diabetes mellitus is okay. It doesn't cause fetal anomalies, not that much at least. Okay. Why does all this happen? You have to remember insulin is more, insulin is less. Pregnancy is a diabetogenic state. So basically what it will do, it will increase the insulin resistance. Okay, this is one theory. Another thing here is they are saying it is less insulin. Didn't they just say it, insulin is going to be more? It's going to be secreted more, but it's going to be destroyed more. Okay. See, Priscilla White classification. <clears throat> See, you know diabetes will cause what? Retinopathy. So if it is retinopathy, they are saying it's D, class D. Nephropathy means it is F, F, nef, nephropathy. 
if it is causing heart if it is uh, associated with heart disease h if it is associated with proliferative retinopathy it is r so d is benign retinopathy and r is proliferative proliferative retinopathy that means new blood vessels are getting formed which is more dangerous right and then uh, that's what you have to remember t means transplant renal transplant okay so this is the classification priscilla white classification if you want you can remember this they have never asked this specifically in the exam but this comes under this topic what are the complications because of diabetes polyhydramnios yes big uh, lot of uh, amniotic fluid then infection can happen ketoacidosis we have told you it will be a large baby right and then uh, they, she can go into postpartum hemorrhage she can there can be sudden death of baby remember then there can be puerperial sepsis lactational failure etc then it can recur and she can also become an over diabetes mellitus okay so what happens to the fetus we told you <clears throat> it will be big big head macrosomia big baby then there can be congenital malformation especially in over diabetes right especially the heart right can get affected then there can be hyperglycemia in the baby once it is born because once it's born it, its pancreas will continue to secrete so much of ins, uh, insulin and it can go what did i say it can go into hypoglycemia in the neonate in the neonate it can be hypo in the hypoglycemia in the fetus it is hyper only okay let's go to the neonate wait See newborn complications is hypoglycemia. Okay, so that makes sense. So once it is born, it, its insulin is, levels are still high, but its glucose levels will be low, so it will go to hypoglycemia. So very important to feed it um, uh, regularly so that it will not go into hypoglycemia. Remember this. And then hypomagnesia, it will have hypocalcemia. Everything will be less for it. It can be in respiratory distress because uh, the insulin, uh, high level of fetal insulin, will block the action of cortisol, which will prevent the surfactant. Right, so then uh, there can be cardiac anomalies. We told you, especially in the over diabetes mellitus, transposition of great vessels is the one. Which is the which is the which is the uh, cardiac anomaly? Transposition of great uh, great arteries, and what in over diabetes mellitus mostly? Okay, transposition of great vessels. That is aorta goes on the pulmonary side, and the pulmonary artery, um, pulmonary vein is it? So they are transposed. Okay, did you understand, people? See the. Uh, But red and blue have got interchanged. You understood, right? Very smart you are. Then uh, this one, sacral agenesis can happen. Okay, most specific to over diabetes mellitus, sacral agenesis. Okay, all this you remember from our diabetes mellitus video, anyways. So how will you manage diabetes mellitus in pregnancy? Tell her to keep her diet and control, and then tell her to take insulin, oral hypoglycemic agents. Also, you can try. Okay. Glyburide, libenclamide, metformin. Remember, in these people, they will try to uh, get the baby out sooner because it can go into sudden death. People, now we will go a little fast. Don't worry. Okay, so we have almost come here. Uh, Polyhydramnio. So that means again something to do with uh, gestational diabetes mellitus only. So here you can see how huge the abdomen is. So in this, there's one uh, thing that you should know. Uh, Polyhydramnio means uh, the largest vertical part. Pocket or the deepest vertical pocket, right? It is greater than eight centimeters or more. Okay, single pocket or AFI, that is amniotic fluid index. That is, if you calculate uh, all these four and add, it will be greater than twenty-four. So greater than eight LVP or greater than twenty-four uh, AFI. That is uh, uh, polyhydramnios. This much you have to remember. Okay. The cause mainly uh, you should remember it can be a fetal anomalies. Okay, this is what you have to remember. Fetal anomalies. Okay, it can be fetal anomalies or Come on, change the color here, yeah. or it can be diabetes. Okay, this much you remember. That's for that's enough for now. Ba basically, the baby, uh, the placenta is making lot of uh, this fluid. Okay, so it can be placental clots, or you can say the baby is urinating a lot and it is swallowing less. So why will it swallow less? Because it has some anomaly, so it can have some uh, uh, some uh, problem with the. Uh, cle cleft lip, okay, cleft, cleft palate, and all that, okay, because of some duodenal or esophageal atresia, because of uh, some anencephaly, all these uh, some causes are there where it is not swallowing enough, okay, and it is peeing a lot also, so some renal cause also something like that you can write diabetes, that's what is there, no, polyuria of the baby, baby is peeing a lot. Chronic is more common, okay. Uh, suddenly and all, it it will not uh, increase, okay. Chronic only, it will be slowly, it will start increasing, uh, and basically you can see that it will be there. Uh, uh, in it can be an evidence of preeclampsia also. That's what they are saying, okay. Guys, just remember remember that in fetal anomalies, this alpha fetal protein can be more, okay. So you can diagnose. What is the differential diagnosis? Twin pregnancy, it can be that is multiple pregnancy, or there is a pregnancy with huge ovarian cysts. So you are thinking that it is more amniotic fluid, or there can be maternal ascites. So don't confuse. Only if amniotic fluid is more, then only you will say polyhydramnios. Okay. Then what are the complications because of this? They can be premature uh, rupture of membranes. Obviously, anybody will say this, right? And then. <coughs> 
there can be preeclampsia there can be uh, uh, because of the sudden rupture of membrane there can be uh, sudden escape of liquor amnai there can be uh, decrease in the surface area so there can be accidental hemorrhage okay <clears throat> then during labor what will happen same thing early rupture of membranes they are telling you they can be cord prolapse imagine because of all this fluid the cord itself comes out the rupture of membranes and the cord comes out then what you will do you will do emergency cesarean section yes all this is easy to say right early rupture of membrane cord prolapse malpresentation obviously so much fluid is that it will turn nicely here and there then um, uh, there can be infection and blood loss okay in pure perium Subinvolution can occur. Why? Because this uterus has distended so much now; it will take time to go back. Then, uh, what about the fetus? We already told you it was uh, having malpresentation, etc. Then it will uh, have sudden death. It can have sudden death. What else, people? So basically, you will just tell her to take bed rest and take. Uh, you can give Sunli Dac. Sunli Dac will reduce the fetal urine output. So the urine output, that part of it at least you can manage. Sunli Dac. Acute polyhydramnios is very rare, people. Okay. This can be because of twin to twin transfusion syndrome again, which is bad. Okay. Now let's move on to this section: uh, twin pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy, molar pregnancy, etc. So all weird uh, pregnancies, all special special pregnancies. Twin pregnancy. Let us look at multiple pregnancy, basically. So uh, what you should understand here: there is a dichorionic, diamniotic, dichorionic, diamniotic. That means two placenta, two amniotic sacs. This can be either dizygotic or monozygotic. But in monozygotic, um, you have something which can be dichorionic or monochorionic. That can there can be double placenta or single placenta. In single placenta, they don't like. We have marked it as red. If it is single placenta, we don't like at all. Monochorionic, diamniotic, or monochorionic, monoamniotic, momo twins. This can lead to conjoined twins, and um, there can be a lot of twin to twin transfusion and trap syndromes, etc. With this, so uh, monochorionic, they don't like. Okay. more well, dichorionic is fine whether it is identical twins or binovular that's on all fine okay so you understood what is green and what's red right very good then try to draw diagrams you will get nice marks mainly you should know the fetal complications like vanishing twin means what earlier it was there and later you don't see that means it uh, got absorbed right one of the twin appearing twin means they didn't know it was twin pregnancy earlier then they came to know it is there is a twin okay what will happen if one of the fetus death uh, early death happens then paparesis compresses uh, uh, all that you should mention then if it is dying later what will happen <clears throat> if it is dying later it can release uh, thromboplastin and it can uh, be harmful right then there can be twin to twin transfusion syndrome in monochorionic or there can be taps okay that is uh, trap i thought trap so basically in this twin what is the difference between this twin to twin transfusion syndrome and taps so basically here you can see that in twin to twin transfusion syndrome there is a donor and recipient that's it okay there can be polyhydramnios etc but in taps what will happen one will have anemia the other will have polycythemia you should remember this and both i think are uh, having bad prognosis and trap in this twin to twin transfusion syndrome the guy who's donating no he will have better chance though he'll be thin and small because uh, he's uh, able to donate and live okay that is what it is but in trap both of them are having pathological state you can see anemia and polycythemia both of them hard to survive how will you know whether it's monochorionic or dichorionic dichorionic will have this uh, see this kind of triangle here so this is twin peak sign right so twin peak sign is good we have made it green you can see and monochorionic will have a thin membrane so it will not have a twin peak sign okay so twin peak sign we have marked it here it is good it is green okay then coming to lambda sign or twin peak sign that's what they are showing here it is good dichorionic diamniotic it means whether it is identical twins or not that doesn't matter to us but it should have two placenta that's what we want twin delivery uh, you can look at that guys um, for the twin uh, the second one they will do internal podalic portion okay look at all that great people you have come so far that's amazing so now let us move on to what shall we go to ectopic pregnancy very good okay so ectopic pregnancy is uh, you have any yes we have separate video if you want more information here we will talk roughly okay high points ectopic pregnancy can be uh, basically anywhere uh, other than the normal endometrial cavity okay it doesn't mean to say it is outside uterus remember it can be within the uterus but still it can be ectopic if it is in the cervix etc Okay, so you can have uh, extra uterine and uterine. Extra uterine, you have the tubule. Most common place is the ampulla. So ampulla, tubule pregnancy uh, is the most common. You can remember this. This is the ectopic pregnancy. Then what else? <coughs> 
So why uh, ectopic pregnancy is caused? Because of salpingitis. The uh, fallopian tube is uh, having some inflammation, right? PID, pelvic inflammatory uh, disease. So basically that's what they're saying. Some infection, inflammation. Then uh, some procedure has been done on these tubes. So that is why this there's some adhesion that happens here and the ovum goes and sits there. Am I right? Yeah. So what will happen to the tube? You can see here where it is uh, between the two mucosal folds. It will go. The muscles are stretched. The blood vessels are engorged. The blastocysts burrows. Then it will have an intramuscular implantation. The blood vessels get eroded by the chorionic villi. Then finally what will happen? The wall is thinned out. Then um, hemoperitoneum can happen. So what is the uh, thing that will happen? There can be a tubal abortion. There can be a complete abortion. Or there can be a tubal mole, molar pregnancy. <clears throat> Finally, what will happen? Abortion, that's what they are talking about, right? And finally, it can continue pregnancy and then it can rupture. Even after rupture, it can go and sit somewhere in the abdomen and it can continue, which is very, very, very rare, okay? So, fate of uh, ectopic, there will be less blood supply, it will not survive, there will be less HCG, remember she is pregnant, but HCG levels are less, that means ectopic, if HCG levels are more, it can be molar pregnancy, remember all this, then uh, there will be less progesterone, obviously in this case everything is less, then um, she will have bleeding per vagina, rupture of tube, remember if there is amine or hoia, okay, not this is not the image you should see, you should see this image, so if there is amine or hoia, she comes even with one or two days uh, delay, always rule out ectopic, okay, if she is pregnant, okay. If she has been pregnant. Now let's go on. Uh, continue here. They are saying shoulder tip pain is very uh, uh, is a sign of hemoperitoneum. Okay, shoulder tip pain. So pouch of Douglas etc. There will be pain. I mean, uh, yeah, there will be blood, blood. So because of rupture, is it? Cullen sign again, same thing that you have seen even in uh, pancreatitis, right? All this we have seen. Cullen sign. This one is what? Gray Turner sign. Yeah. Then, how will you treat expectant management? Only um, very rarely they are telling this. When the HCG levels are falling by itself, when the gestational sac is small, <clears throat> where there is no fetal heartbeat at all. <clears throat> so very rarely they are talking about expectant management. Uh, then otherwise what treatment you will give? You want to save the tube if it has not ruptured. So you will give methotrexate etc. to uh, remove this uh, pregnancy. So you are giving KCL that is cardiotoxic to fetal heart so that you will um, uh, get end this pregnancy which is growing in the wrong place. Then you are doing the surgical linear salpingostomy. Linear, remember it is linear salpingostomy that they are doing. Right? And they are trying to save the tube. <coughs> If it has ruptured, what will you do? You have to do resuscitation, uh, simultaneous resuscitation and laparotomy. Together you will do. And then uh, what are you doing here? You will bring the, will bring the tubes together and uh, you will suture. Okay, that is laparotomy. And then you can do salpingectomy also. You can remove the fallopian tube. Uh, <clears throat> now one side, whichever side. So that if you cannot save it, that's what they are trying to say. That is ectopic pregnancy, guys. Now let us move on to molar pregnancy. Okay, so people... Now let us look at molar pregnancy. Okay, molar pregnancy means pregnancy that has gone wrong. Another way of pregnancy that can go wrong. That is ectopic also is wrong. Molar is also wrong. What is wrong with molar? Molar means uh, two sperms will fertilize one ovum or uh, the ovum has no chromosomes at all. So all these are weird combinations which, which we will look at. See basically, uh, look at this. Uh, when does placenta form in anybody when they get pregnant? So either they are pregnant perfectly fine, normal pregnancy okay uh, or it can be a uh, wrong fertilization so that becomes a molar pregnancy okay so either a normal one or an abnormal one whatever can become a placental uh, tumor cancer okay so that will become choriocarcinoma but in this uh, what are we talking about molar pregnancy molar pregnancy means what pregnancy that is not fine so basically in that what happened there is a, a partial mole or complete mole partial mole or complete mole means the Look at partial mole here. Partial mole means there, there can be a fetal a fetus present. So there is an ovum which is 23 and there are two sperms that are fertilizing. If two sperms fertilize, then it will become a 69 uh, uh, chromosome uh, zygote. Do you call that a zygote? Uh, so this one basically will not survive. However, uh, this dead fetus can be found inside the womb. Okay. So again, this what will happen? There will be a placenta which is retained. Right? What will happen? There is a placenta which is retained. Look at this image here. This is a partial mole. So this is a pregnancy which is not proper. Wrong fertilization has happened. Okay. So in this there will be a missed abortion. 
again what was there here there is a placenta uh, which is a benign tumor in this case this placenta is um, what am i trying to say people so did you understand these are placental conditions so this is molar pregnancy which is partial now coming to complete complete what happens look at this um, the ovum is not having any uh, the oocyte is it the oocyte is not at all having any chromosomes there is a sperm uh, that comes and fertilizes and uh, only 23 it multiplies to becomes 46 and that uh, tries to form an embryo which doesn't work it's more like a only paternal uh, chromosomes are there or uh, a single ovum two sperms are fertilizing and again uh, it is forming 46 and trying to form a baby but this doesn't work out so this is again a fertilization that's gone wrong so in this case what will happen the fetus will definitely uh, uh, die so this it's in dying in embryo stage actually you can say the embryo itself dies okay and then uh, what is left behind is all these uh, uh, villi villi villus tissue so that will become a uh, grape like cluster snowstorm appearance okay in the usg ultrasound you will see snowstorm appearance in the uterus and here you can see grape like uh, vesicles being passed out of the vagina okay so this is um, a high dietary form mole uh, uh, like water droplets that's why they're using that name molar pregnancy this is a complete mole complete mole can become what it can become carcinoma we already told you this if you didn't pay attention complete mole can become carcinoma okay so uh, what else you should know here here all in in this molar pregnancies right remember uh, in normal pregnancy let's put normal pregnancy here this is normal pregnancy in that hcg levels will be something perfect okay if it is ectopic pregnancy if it is ectopic pregnancy, what will happen? The HCG will be very less. If it is molar pregnancy, the ecto, uh, the HCG will be very, very high. And if the HCG is greater than 1 lakh, then this person can even go into carcinoma. She can get placental tumor. And also if her age is greater than 40, etc., that becomes a high risk choriocarcinoma. Okay? High risk for choriocarcinoma. Did you understand? This is the whole concept. How do you think you'll manage this case, guys? So, you'll have to remove and evacuate the uterus. That's what is required, right? So, dilatation and evacuation. Dilatation, if needed, only you will do. Suction evacuation. Then, uh, curettage you will do if required. And tell her, don't get pregnant now for one year because you will not know whether the HCG is, uh, you want the HCG levels to drop. But again, if she becomes pregnant, HCG levels will go on increasing. You will not understand if she's going into some kind of carcinoma or is it because of the pregnancy. So, she should not get pregnant till uh, for one more year. And then, uh, methotrexate, actinomycin, cyclophosphamide this is more like a anti-cancer kind of a drug anyways uh, this is uh, here it is not cancerous yet so they are giving methotrexate etc so these are um, um, uh, yeah actinomycin cyclophosphamide immunosuppressant right this is retoposide vincristi so there is mac emac o mac and emac o regimen uh, where do you use MAC and EMACO regimen? Say, 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 MAC and EMACO regimen. Where will you use? Methotrexate, axinomycin, yes, yes, yes. And placental tumor, you should not forget, okay? Okay, then hysterectomy is fa family is complete, okay? Remaining this much is there, no? That uh, MTP, uh, breach, how will you handle, uh, non-stress test, etc., etc., everything about labor and uh, all the cesarean section, all that we will look at in the next video, okay? And even the specific terms, we'll all look at all this in the second video. Because this video already I think it's too much for you.